Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? everyone? Alrighty then. So, welcome to How to Nubia. And in this next tips and tricks video, I'm going to be talking about keywords. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game, you know, if you've been playing long enough, there's a lot of reading involved. But before I get to that, I'm sure you're wondering and asking yourselves, why was it in the first tips and tricks video I talked about, you know, colors, you know, that you remember cards by their color. Well, these are, this is the first Yu-Gi-Oh! habit that I want to ingrain in you. I want you as, as your Yu-Gi-Oh! Sensei, right? I want to teach you that the most important thing is to get these tips and tricks to make them natural, to make them a part of your Yu-Gi-Oh! playing life, to make this game easier and more accessible so that there's less, you, so you have more enjoyment in the game. One of the reasons why I tell you about, you know, color association, color memorization, is so that you get into the habit of not reading, of looking at a card, knowing its color, and knowing exactly what it is. I want it to be second nature. It needs to be second nature. And this is the first step in you entering the enjoyment of Yu-Gi-Oh! Don't tell us no surprise. First step. It is the foundation. Let's get you not reading cards. Let's get you playing this game and enjoying this game. After all, this is one of the biggest issues I feel with Yu-Gi-Oh! is that there is a lot of reading. There's a lot of words on these cards and on these cards and it feels intimidating. It feels like well, I can't do this. Like, you know, like Why did you do this? You know better, right? Why? Well, maybe over here, you know, on the western side and I'm like Japan is because people don't like reading. I I'm sorry to, you know, I'm a big surprise here, but reading words, you know, on a card, you know, with and essays on cards, you know, it's not fun. It really isn't fun. Um, it really, really is. So that is one of the reasons why I talked about, you know, color memorization is that the first step that I want to get into in inbuilt, you know, ingrained into you is to know cards by their color. I want you to, you know, as a player, don't read as much, you know, this is, and that is the first step. No cards by their color so you know exactly what it is. It becomes instinctual like this, you know, you snap your fingers and you know, you know exactly, you know, like yellow means normal, black means X, Y, Z, etc, etc, etc. You know exactly what I'm on about. Okay? Okay. So let's get to what I was saying before now with the next topic, keywords. So as you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, as I've been saying before, has a lot of words on it. And, you know, when you want to get to the higher levels of play, if you want to enjoy this game, reading all those words, it's just, it's, it's going to take time, it's going to take effort. And I've been playing the game, you know, now, since its inception, you know, since, you know, 1996, since I was nine years old. And I'm not going to lie, reading all those words is, is long. It's really, really long. But I decided, you know what? There's got to be a better way than this. There's got to be a way that, you know, we can't, I can't be spending all my time reading. You know, and as the, every three years we get a new mechanic, we get new rules, we get new things. I'm just like, this is too much, man. I, I, ca I can't. I, there's got to be a better way than this. And one of the things I discovered were keywords. There were words that I saw on monster cards that would keep repeating, that I would see them over and over and over and over again and so i and so i decided to develop a system for myself and hopefully i will introduce it to you to you guys now so that you know the game wasn't as difficult it made it easier and more accessible and it made Yu-Gi-Oh enjoyable and not such a chore to to go through now with that being said let's go through uh what you know the keywords you know that you know that are there um some of these keywords are you know so but in order to start you know talking about the keywords we first need to talk about you know what kind of effects are you doing so first of all there are turn effects cost effects counter effects trigger effects and then we have no response effects now, obviously, these are the five main effects that you're going to find, you know, especially when you're playing the game. Now, there are other effects like, you know, like flip, 
like flip, you know, effects. But we're not gonna get into that now. We're just gonna, uh, just gonna deal with, you know, the, the bread and butter, the main thing that you'll find in cards, which is, you know, those five effects, which is cost, turn, trigger, continuous, and counter. You know, we're gonna keep it basic. So with those five sort of effects, you're gonna find that there are key words in these effects. And with that being said, let's get to me offering you examples of these keywords. Okay, here I go. The examples are coming now. Keywords. When. Once per turn. You can only. If. Quick effect. In response to this effect's activation. Turn effects. Turn effects are identified as such with the wording once per turn. Any ending with the effect turn in the sentence indicates as such. Which is why, when you spot the keyword turn on a monster card, you get into the habit of only reading it on your turn. The key to reading cards like this quickly is 1. Locate the word turn. Then read the two sentences, or three, above it. Please take note, the first sentence on a monster with a turn effect is usually to be ignored. Exceptions to this rule are when you see the words when and if. When and if are wording that means that the effect happens first, as it is linked to the summon condition of that card. Otherwise, if not, follow what was said earlier. I have put a red box to indicate where the once per turn usually is on monster cards, so you need to learn to read from the bottom up instead from the top to bottom. Doing this means you only have two to three sentences to read, instead of the whole card. Please take note, what's important is the effect, not everything else on the card. This method helps in reducing that word count on what you read. Okay, so as you have seen there, I am talking about, right, you know, turn effects, right? So, this is where I want to start building, you know, a good Yu-Gi-Oh! habit. And one of the good Yu-Gi-Oh! habits that we are trying to build here for you is that you need to be looking at keywords when it comes to reading in Yu-Gi-Oh! Build this habit into, you know, your playing routine. A good Yu-Gi-Oh! habit is you first look at the keyword as explained earlier and then look two to three sentences above the keyword, depending on where the keyword is. Whether it's, you know, at the first sentence of the, whether it's, you know, at the first sentence, you know, the card and the effect text, or at the bottom, depending where it is, right? Build that Yu-Gi-Oh! habit, you know? Look for the keyword, read two to three sentences above or below said keyword, okay? That's the Yu-Gi-Oh! habit that you need to be building. Read from bottom to top instead of from top to bottom. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh! habit I'd like you to build. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh! habit that I built for myself, and I found it's made the game much, much easier. Okay, let's go to the next uh, topic. Cost effects. Cost effects are identified with the word pay in its effect text. Please take note, any form of losing card advantage while getting something in return. So an effect that is a give and take, where you pay in life points, for example, and you get an effect afterwards, is a cost effect, even if the word pay isn't in the effect. Like before, I have put a red box indicating where you will usually find the keyword pay. Examples include, you can pay, pay. Please take note, on monsters, only cost effects are always worded as you can pay. The word pay will appear on spells and traps as those will be treated as cost effects. So remember, look for the keywords you can pay. Read the bot from the bottom to the top. The first two or three sentences above the keyword. This method never fails. Like before, seeing the words when and if, those effects will apply first before you get to the main effect. When and if keywords will appear when they are on a monster on the first sentence in the effect text. General rules applying to cost effects and turn effects. 1. Read them from bottom to top from the keyword mentioned. 2. Maximum, you should only read three sentences, not any more, unless the words when and if are on the card. But take notes, these words apply to the monster summon condition effects. 
meaning the effects will only apply on the summon of said monster, hence the importance of that effect. <laughs> yes, I like it. Trigger effects. Trigger effects are different than other effects, as they only activate when certain conditions are met. Keywords for these include 1. Destroyed by battle or card effect 2. Fun fact, floodgate effects are also considered trigger effects 3. If your opponent 4. Activation of the card relies on a mechanical effect 5. Read them normally Please take note, trigger effects are best described with activation conditions that rely on certain effects or certain conditions happening in the game. But as you kids can see here, the spell triple, triple tactics talent is the textbook example of a trigger effect since its activation requires a condition. This first sentence of this spell. The general rule for trigger effects is that they're easy to identify as their effects are usually tied to the activation condition or summon condition of the card they're on. Exceptions apply to the keywords destroyed by battle or card effect. Also, bear in mind with trigger effects, locate the keywords as mentioned above, then apply them only when that situation arises. Please take into consideration trigger effects can be inactive during duels given the kind of wording it has. Okay, so then we're going to be talking about right we're, oh, we're gonna be talking about like um if I can just get things up and running here, the trigger effects. Yeah, and I think I've talked about that, you know, just, just now, just before. But let's repeat again. So essentially, with trigger effects, you know, so they may not follow the standard rule of, you know, the turn effects and the cost effects. And, you know, as I've said, as I've said, you know, with trigger effects, you know, as I'm going to repeat myself, you know, now again, you know, trigger effects are only activated when certain effects or certain conditions you know, certain mechanics, you know, in the game take place. So it's important, again, to look and find, yes, you guessed it, find these keywords and then read the effects from these keywords. You want to be reading backwards. You want to be reading from bottom to top. Build this habit. This is a good Yu-Gi-Oh! habit to have. Once you have this Yu-Gi-Oh! habit, then all effects will follow the same structure as you're not going to need to be reading the whole card. Remember, the most important thing is to be looking at a card and being able to get the correct information you need from that card all the time, every time. Okay? So, that's the key. And this is something we're going to keep repeating over and over and over. Find the keywords, look at the keywords, read before and after you know, two to three sentences. Now, please, practice this technique. You know, this is something I've been doing, you know, for myself. And I found that it's made the game so much easier. I look at a card and I'm like this. And I instantly know, you know, what is this card? What does it do? You know what? I know what it is. I know its effect. And I'm not inundated. I'm not I'm not overwhelmed, right, with all these knowledge and all these things. Because when you study when you look at cards not study rather, but when you look at Yu-Gi-Oh cards in this way you look at the keywords and then you look at you know uh, two to three sentences you know their effects you know you will never go wrong you know you can't go wrong because you will always find the effect of that card no matter what it is this expression rule especially applies to monsters right remember this and stuff like trigger effects stuff like that will Maybe it might seem overwhelming, you know, might have all these key, uh, might have all these things, but don't despair, don't worry, you know, follow the general rule, the general template, and you'll be fine. Now, I've not mentioned this before, but I have been talking about, you know, in these topics, you know, again, as you mentioned in Trigger, you know, when and if. Now, when and if are things that apply to summon condition, right? So this is something you really shouldn't pay attention to, because this will only apply the wordings of when and if those two words, right? They will apply on the summon condition of the set card. So they usually, these usually words of when and if usually apply when, you know, the most say summon. It's usually an effect that happens, you know, on summon. It's part of a response, you know, from your opponent. Again, these, these are effects that happen on summon. And as a result of that, these are effects that you're going to need to apply first when you summon the card. 
Hence why you know you're doing them first. Otherwise, right? Otherwise, if they don't have when and if in the effect in the effect text, if it's not there, then ignore it. Really, the general rule I say personally: ignore, if, uh, you know, the first sentence of effects. You know, if there's no when and if in there, just ignore it. You don't need to read that. That's pointless. It's redundant, right? You don't need it. What you need is to get to the effect. If it doesn't have when and if in that effect box, don't read it. It's useless information. You don't need it. What you need is to get the effect. That is what you need. As a Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, that is what I, I need you to take home from all of this. Find the effect. Find the keywords. Find the effect. That's it. Okay. Continuous effects. Continuous effects are cards that have no activation condition, as they don't start chains and they do not interact with effects that negate activations. Keywords cannot be activated. Your opponent cannot. Use of the word cannot in the effect text. Fun fact, continuous effects have the least wording on them, unlike the rest of the other effects. They can be as small as just one sentence at times. No tricks to reading. Reading this, just read it normally. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Yo, so we have continuous effects. Now, continuous effects, again, these are pretty simple, you know, because as I mentioned, you know, just, just now, they don't have activation conditions. They don't, you can't chain to them. You can't, you know, they can't, you know, they get activations, they can't be responded to because they don't have that to begin with. This makes them very easy, you know. In fact, these are the kind of effects you're not going to see very often in Yu-Gi-Oh! The most, the effects you're going to see the most often are turn effects, counter effects, and trigger effects. These are the three effects you're going to be seeing on monsters every single time. Counter effects are few and far between. You don't get a lot of them because I don't know what it is, but they just, they're not common. So really, you're not going to have to worry about this. And usually continuous effects, they usually possess only one sentence, you know, so their, their wordings are very small. You can read them normally. You know, you don't need to read. You don't need to use the method of saying, well, you know, read from bottom to top. You know, they're very, they have very few word count. The word counts are few very few so you don't have to worry about that no stress no nothing nothing like that okay that's cool that's all i've got to say about continuous effects it's very strong mm -hmm. counter effects counter effects are identified by the wording during either player's turn or a quick effect keywords during either player's turn quick effect counter effects are worded weirdly because where the keywords are can vary at times. It can be near the activation or summon condition. Other times it can be at the bottom of the effect text. Curveballs can be thrown as well, having them be placed in the middle so where the keywords are placed is all over the place. But the general rule I apply is to read them on the opponent's turn and apply them at that time. Since they are effects that interact with the opponent, it's a waste of time to be reading this on your turn tricks to make this not a chore to read is 1. Look for the keywords. 2. Read the sentence after the keyword. This will usually be one or two sentences, sometimes three, although rarely. It is usually two sentences. This does reduce your reading time. The general rule is always find the keyword first, then read the next few sentences after it. Bear in mind, unless by two sentences on a Counter effect usually gives you a rough idea of what the effect is. It is a good Yu-Gi-Oh habit to just read two sentences. Only practice makes perfect. I can explain. Let me explain. Okay, and so we'll talk about now counter effects. So counter effects again something that you know i'm talk, talk, talking about now and i've just finished talking about it but again it follows the same rule it follows the same thing and this is something i'm going to keep repeating again it doesn't really change but i really want to 
drive home this point. Now, it may differ, you know, a bit, you know, because the keywords, you know, are there. And yes, it is advice, as I as I've so said, you know, you read from the keywords, whether it's before, you know, the keyword or after the keyword. Now, this is where, like, you want to build the habit of reading this because when you build this habit, as I've just told you before, this good Yu-Gi-Oh habit of reading from the keyword right two sentences, two to three sentences above or below the keyword, you will get the effect. And so this especially applies when it comes to counter effects. Now, one of the things I've mentioned, you know, about counter effects, it's best you read this, and this is what I found for myself, and this is my general rule that I apply anyway. Um, read this on your opponent's turn. Get into the habit of reading counter effects on your opponent's turn. Don't read them on your turn. It's redundant. Leave it alone. These are effects that only activate on your opponent's turn, so you should only pay attention to them on your opponent's turn. You want to minimize the information that you get. This is a lot of words. This is a lot of reading. There's a lot of things that you need to pay attention to. You need to pay attention to your, your opponent's game state. You need to be, there's too many things, right? So what I want to do, what I want to tell you, what I want to ingrain into you, is that remember that reading is should not take a lot of your time. Remember to always, always find the keywords, right? And look to keep two to three sentences above the keyword. Whether it's above the keyword or below the keyword, you know, in the effect text, you know, find it. Good. Now, ideally, this is the ideal. Once you get better and practice this, you should, yeah, and this is this is this is not applies to me, but you know, this you know can apply to you as well. You should be able to know a card instantly by reading two sentences of the card. Because generally, as a general rule of, uh, you know, effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! When you find the keyword and read two sentences above or below, you know, the keyword, the effect will be explained. Yeah? The effect will be there. It will be explained. You will have a general idea of what the effect is. And this, reading two sentences, should take you a minimum of one minute. What? Right? It shouldn't take longer than that. What takes longer is when you read the whole card. So when you use this method that I'm telling you about, it should take, you know, looking at cards really should take you a minimum of a minute a card. You know, because again, you don't need to look at the card. What we're isolating here is the effect. That's what you need. Now, stuff like activation conditions, stuff like that, these are important, right, when activating the card on the summon condition. Again, these, these are effects that are only important when the wordings when and if are in the effect text. So, yeah, remember this. And I think with trigger, that's about it. Just remember with trigger effects, you read them normally, but ideally, like, you know, let's practice this with your habit that I'm, like, you know what I'm saying, that you know, I'm trying to teach to you, you know, practice it, keep doing it, build this habit into your system, make it natural so that the game becomes easier. Okay, let's go to the next uh, topic. No response effect. No response effect are identified by the wording neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this card activation. Keyword. Neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this card activation. When seeing this kind of effect, the keyword is all that matters. This wording means no response from opponent. Essentially, you can show. This effect is the most powerful effect Yu-Gi-Oh! Tricks to reading this. 1. Locate the key word. 2. Like before, read the sentences 2 or 3 sentences before or after the key word, depending where the key word is placed. 3. Practice makes perfect. Build this Yu-Gi-Oh! habit. Read 2 to 3 sentences on a card. As you get better at this technique, you should be fine with just 2 sentences. Please remember, you should be spending the least amount of time possible reading Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And in your heart, you know I'm right. Okay, and now we have the next thing I'm talking about, which is no response effect. Now, these is the wording that you get of neither player can activate, right? Whenever you see this kind of wording, you know, that neither player can activate. Or, you know, I didn't mention it in there, but you cannot activate, you know. 
it has to be the word activate. So the key word here is activate. You know, when you see the word activate or you cannot activate, neither player can activate, right? This means that you cannot, you know, there is no response, you know. Activation condition, it's very similar to the continuous effect where it freezes, the game is frozen, you know. No player can respond. If it's you cannot activate, you know, your opponent cannot respond to you. If it's neither player can activate, you and your opponent cannot respond to, you know, the effect activation. This is important as when you look at these keywords, you know, you can take your time. Now with other sort of effects, you know, you don't need, you really don't need to take your time because, you know, if they're fluid, you know, those are things that you need to be, you know, you need to be on the ball, you need to, you need to be quick about it. But with neither player, with, you know, the word in neither player's turn, you can take it, you can take it a little bit, little bit slow because the moment they're activated, the get you know, the game's frozen. You know, it's a, we we freeze, freeze frame. Right? Yeah, like that, yeah. And, you know, your opponent can't respond. You're free to do whatever you want within reason of the effects that is stated on the card. But, like I mentioned before, it's good to build that your habit that um, uh, we are building. You know, read from the bottom up. Read from the keyword, really. Read from the keyword and read, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the two sentences above or three, two sentences above. Uh, or, two sentences, or two sentences below, you know the keyword. Okay, that's it. And now I'm going to go to the conclusion and summary of all the things that I've been saying.